All right, welcome to another edition of Webinar Wednesday. It's really nice that uh, we can take the time this week and uh, spend it to help grow our online communities. Uh, we have a lot of great updates to share with you today, as well as a great tip of the week discussion. I think everyone will be able to uh, get some benefit from what we're going to share with you guys today. If this is your first time joining us, welcome. I am Jason Dare on the left, and we're lucky to be joined by David Rockland, the digital strategist and mastermind behind putting together all these amazing webinars for us. So Dave, thanks for taking the time to join us today. Hey everyone, really excited to pull together a few different concepts that we've covered in previous webinars in this week's tip of the week, so that'll be coming up soon. Thank you, David. And I always like to mention, if you're not already part of our Facebook group, I do encourage you to join. You can head on over to brilliantdirectories.com forward slash Facebook. It's a great way to keep in touch in between webinars. Lots of productive and constructive conversations and discussions in there. I'm in there myself. And yeah, if, if you have questions after the webinar, you can join us there. Just head over to brilliantdirectories.com forward slash Facebook and click on that blue join link if you're not a member yet. And also for those of you joining us for the first time, welcome. Webinar Wednesday is a great uh, channel and platform to talk about strategies for growing your online community. We like to tie in features of the software that you can leverage and utilize to achieve the growth uh, of your community. So we like to talk uh, about things like how to convert visitors to members, like what kinds of things should be on your web pages, uh, identifying revenue opportunities. One of my favorites I always like to mention is how to improve your website's flow and navigation. I'm a big advocate for simple and clear calls to action uh, to get users to the finish line of what you're hoping for them uh, to achieve. And also a good note on that, a lot of times people are not ready to sign up or buy. They're in the awareness stage. They are exploring options. So you also want to have assets and resources to appeal to those people who may not just be ready to make a buying decision or sign up decision as of today. We want to find ways to bring them into our ecosphere of your community uh, to get them in, uh, involved and get them on your email list or just get them engaged with you. So that's also part of important uh, clear and simple navigation of your site. All right, so we have not too many BD Lab updates the last few weeks. Uh, actually, this whole year has been uh, pretty strong with the, with the amount of work that's coming out of the development team here. I just have a few simple ones that I'd like to share with you guys, kind of a few nuances that you can see on your sites that are going to provide and deliver a better user experience for both your members and the general visitors who are coming uh, to your sites. And the first one, I did make an announcement of this one uh, in the Facebook group. The newsletter module, some of you may be using the newsletter module in the footer of your site. It's that one bar and there was a single email input field down there. The problem with that was because it was on a single line, it was hard to include the Google security, recapture security. Uh, and if you're using GDPR, uh, it was hard to find an elegant way to design in those consent check boxes as well. So based on the suggestions in the Facebook group, uh, the best direction to go in would just to be to make this a button and you get a pop-up with the form. So I can show you what that looks like uh, for everyone here. Okay, I think we can work on this sample site here. If we go to the footer, this is just a demo site we work on. So now you'll notice in the footer of your site, instead of the input field, uh, it's just a single button here. Um, and you can click this button and you'll get the join newsletter form. And you can see here in this example, we have the GDPR consent boxes. If you, if you have that enabled, uh, you have the Google recapture. And what's really nice about this form now is in case you wanted to capture uh, more than just a name and an email address for the newsletter sign up, or maybe you're repurposing it. It's not even a newsletter sign up. You're calling it something else. It's an application or whatever you're using this for to collect data. Uh, you can certainly customize this form and add additional fields. And because it's in the pop-up here, you know, adding four or five or however many fields is still going to look nice in the pop-up. Whereas if, when it was on this single line here in the footer, it was really hard to add all these very important elements. So uh, if you have that footer newsletter footer sign up uh, enabled on your site, uh, this is the, the way it'll work now on your site. Okay, this is um, a nice one. It's, it's a really small change, but I think it, it'll make a really big impact. 
Um, let me show you an example of this. Let's go to our demo bootstrap site. So when you're logged in as a member, you have this little module here with your picture and you know, there's a little tiny picture here as well. What we've done is usually when you go into a mobile view, um, it would just say my account and there was another icon here. It was like a little user's icon or it was actually a text label so you could make that icon whatever you wanted or not even include an icon. Um, now it will kind of emulate what's happening on the desktop view uh, with that little drop down. It'll use the profile picture here. So when users are on mobile view, it's going to be a little more clear uh, because they see their picture there and what they expect, uh, they can now access their my account sidebar uh, information uh, there. And what's really cool is that, uh, I think last year we made it so this pop up works on mobile no matter what page they are on the site. They don't have to be on one of their member dashboard pages. In fact, we're on the home page right now. The member is logged in and they can still toggle their sidebar here. So a really nice control there just to give an additional a personal touch to the member as they're browsing your site uh, and they're logged in from a mobile device. Okay, this one was actually, um, let me see if Eric's not joining us today, but he's been advocating for this one for a while. Um, up until now, there really hasn't been a way if you wanted to view, for example, all the events of a single member, unless you went to their profile page and looked at all the available tabs on their profile page. Um, what you can do now is, and you can create your own links if you want to and, and whatnot, but, but there is a method now for designers and developers out there, and um, we, we'll probably at create documentation on this to make it easier for you guys to add this to your site. But let me show you an example. You can now um, link to all the posts of, of, of a member, and let me show you an example here. Let's go back to this site, and let's go to blog. So this is a stream of the, the website's uh, blog articles. And I guess I'm logged in as John Smith. Let's see what his ID number is or her name. I guess it was just because. So this person is member ID 61744. So what we can do is you could do question mark user ID equals and it will pull the post just from that member. So if I change this ID number to something else, I'll just put like 50, you should see no results because there's no member with that ID number. Um, so you could do any of your features, for example, events, as long as you go to the URL and you do you know, user ID and their ID number, you could link directly to all their articles. And we're gonna create more documentation on this. So you could create like sidebar links or other links, for example, a good place to put this probably in the future now that it's available is when you are on a member's profile page, um, for example, John Smith blog articles may be including a link right here, view all articles by John Smith, and it would take you to that search results page and that probably would be uh, good for Google as well because it would you know, just do more internal linking on the site overall. So now that I'm thinking out loud about this, um, that's a really high value uh, feature that uh, we'll be able to leverage more and more as we move forward with it and we can get some feedback from you guys um, now that it's available as well. Let me talk about one more thing about that. So I showed you guys an example when it's question mark. Again, now I'm speaking to kind of the people who are a little more developer savvy. So if we do uh, like category one and hit search, over here you'd want to do and user ID uh, equals the user's ID number here. So you can put that at the end. When it's all these question marks or ands are additional search parameters, so uh, you can also use and. But if it's the first search parameter, you're going to use question mark. All right, let's move on. This is more updates to the text editor in the admin area. Um, now you can easily replace images uh, in the text editor as you're working. Um, so prior to this, if you, if you created a page in the text editor and you wanted to replace an image, you'd have to delete the image and then add a new image. Now you could do it really elegantly 
um, with just a few clicks. Let me show you how that works. I know more and more people are using the, uh, the text editors here. So if you go to edit web pages and let's go to the home page, let's add an image into here. We'll just pick an arbitrary image that we have on this test site. So what you can do now is when you click on the image, you'll see these arrows they are pointing in opposite directions. It says replace. You can go ahead and click on that. You will be prompted with the, uh, the options to select additional images. And right there in that same space, uh, it'll replace the image. So you don't have to delete the image come back here and, and click it. And it's especially helpful if you've also if you've already created a nice layout for the page, um, you can now use that replace uh, button here and it would just do it in line. And we've mentioned this in a couple webinars, the billing reminder emails add-on. It has been released to a few beta users. Uh, we just wanted to do some soft testing with it. Um, it is going to be released probably May 1st for all VIP add-ons club members. And then if anyone wants to purchase it a la carte, and what that is going to do is you can choose to enable uh, reminder emails for upcoming payments, and you can choose up to 14 days in advance if you'd like those emails to be sent to members. And I think what's most important is the automated emails when a member's payment is past due and you can send up to three past due emails. So you can send a reminder on the first day, then maybe a second email on the third day, and then seven days later. That will keep your members engaged and inform them of payment activity that's happening on your site, and you could be totally hands off after you just set the initial settings of what you want enabled and disabled with regards to the available email settings. So probably in the next webinar, we'll have that released uh, for everyone, and we can get some more feedback uh, on uh, how you guys are using that and enjoying that. Some things that are coming soon, more control over your homepage design and elements. Uh, you'll be able to add a cover overlay over your homepage hero image. What does that mean? Let's say you have an image and you wanna put like a filter over it, like a maybe like a shadow, the image is too bright, it's not contrasting the text nice enough. You'll be able to create that color overlay. More options for your streaming widgets. You'll be able to choose if you want rectangle or square shapes, if you want the, the image to fill the whole space corner to the corner, or you want the image to definitely contain based on the image proportions uh, and some other options as well. Uh, there is one that I can show you. In the hero divider, you'll soon be able to choose if you want to continue using just icons, or what I'm excited about is the ability to choose images, and let me show you that here. So it will be, this is that test site we've been playing around with. In your homepage hero divider settings, uh, you'll be able to choose use icon, which we're all familiar with, and it's the standard right now for everyone. Or you can toggle it to use image, and then you can upload your images accordingly. Um, just a pro tip, you probably just want to make sure the three images are the same sizes, so one isn't taller or wider than the other. Um, but when you do do that, uh, let's go to this demo site that we play around with here. Uh, you can have images here on your homepage as opposed to just the icons. And then one more thing we're doing with the hero divider settings. Uh, you'll also be able to choose the top and bottom padding. Let's just do something extreme like 100 pixels. And what's really nice about that is you can then make your the hero divider a, a bit more of a showcase on your, your homepage. So we can see here with the background color we added and the spacing, you can really make an impact with three good calls to action right there on your homepage for whatever you want to use these uh, spots for. Soon you'll be able to turn your post category pages into their own static pages. So if you want to add custom content to, let's say you have products and one of the categories is furniture. So you can create a landing page for the furniture search results of your products post types. That's gonna be really great. And again, add additional SEO value uh, and control for you guys. And then something that's been rec uh, requested in the Facebook group is when members are logged into the site and reviewing other members, they don't have to re-enter their email address since we know that they're already logged into the site. So that should create a more streamlined experience when leaving member reviews. 
So lots of stuff in the labs, lots of things coming down the pipeline. A lot of it is based on your feature suggestions and feedback. So thank you, everyone. I know I always say a mouthful when we're coming to these BD lab updates, uh, but personally, I'm just really excited to share all of it and uh, really happy that we could continue delivering happiness to you guys uh, with all these cool updates and features. All right, let's just take a minute. I know that I just dropped a lot of information here on anyone. Do you guys have any questions about these features or any of the new features that are released on your sites? Maybe we could take a question or two before we go into the tip of the week here. All right, we got Toby's got his hand up. How you doing, Toby? I'm very well, thank you very much. Okay. Um, I, was just, I was just wondering on this uh, color overlay for hero images, any idea when that might be available? Yeah, I think that's going through our QA process now. I'd say less than two weeks. Um, it'll be available maybe maybe within a week. I don't want to overpromise. Uh, so a safe bet would be within uh, the next two weeks or hopefully sooner. Perfect. Thank you very much indeed. You're welcome. All right, we got Rich. How you doing, Rich? Great information so far. The quick question was on the newsletter uh, module update. Will that uh, avoid or deter or reduce the amount of bots that's trying to subscribe to our newsletter? That's exactly the intention of that update. Usually bots are looking for kind of like open forms that have no validation on them or no security checks on them. In this case, um, it isn't a pop-up, although the, the form is in the source code of the site, but now you can have the consent boxes, um, you can have uh, the Google security. So it should definitely reduce the, the spam bots coming through the site. I, I never want to say it'll um, reduce spam 100% because just as technology evolves, so do the spam bots. Um, so we just have to keep our pulse on, on what's happening. Um, and then some good, some good best practices if you are receiving, uh, you know, inquiries to your site from unwanted inquiries to your site. Uh, you know, we always recommend it, you know, block the IP in your admin. Uh, those are some things you can do. Just make sure you have, there's no software updates on your da homepage dashboard in your admin area. Uh, sometimes there's just some things to add additional form security there for your sites. Those are always safe uh, to install on your sites. They just have to be clicked on and, and checked on periodically. You know, we only, we only push those maybe a few times per year. So check, look for the software updates. Uh, in your dashboard and let me show everyone where that where that is if you go to your dashboard but if you go to your dashboard here you can see install new updates and you can check for updates and generally we get a lot of questions like is this going to change anything on the front end of my site what this is really doing is it's um, adding and unlocking additional settings in the admin area mainly um, so if, it, if it's for form security, it's adding extra fields to your database tables um, to allow for the extra security checks uh, and things like that. So here's one. This site actually has like enable form spam security. If you see stuff like that, uh, you definitely want to install it on your site. All right. Good question there. Before we move on, Don had a really great simple question. He wants sure. to know how to block IPs. Uh, I'm assuming we can probably just show how to do that from like the form inquiries page. That's yeah, that's a great uh, great question. So um, I'll show a couple places actually. Um, let's look at search members. Let's look at um, emails, form inquiries. And we can just leave it there for now, those two. So um, let's say you're getting a bunch of member signups. You know, it's very common when you offer a free membership plan that these bots or sometimes SEO companies, their job is to just get their clients listed on websites for backlinks and whatnot. But on the search members page, if you notice that, you know, you're getting a bunch of unwanted signups, uh, you can certainly, the IP address is here from the page that, that, that they joined your site from. Um, so if you're seeing the same IP over and over and over again, uh, we're actually seeing that here in this case. Uh, well, this is the test site that we're working on. But you can just copy this IP address here. And then you also notice whenever we show the IP address, there is a block IP button. It's just a two-step process. You click the button. It's going to take you to the area where you can block an IP. Just paste it here and click Add. I don't want to add this IP because I think it's one of our developers who's working on this test site. And the same thing under your emails form inquiries. Again, if you're there, we show an IP address here, which is again really good for your security and to know where all this stuff is coming from. There's the same block IP button, uh, so you can just copy this this here, and then uh, block the IP uh, here. 
it's it's a good intermediary solution. You know, IPs can be changed by bots or SEO companies and whatnot, so it can kind of get um, annoying sometimes, especially if you're offering a free membership and they're just continuing to take advantage of that. Um, just some things you can do if you want to kind of deter them. Um, you do have the ability to moderate all signups, so maybe they can create a free listing, but it won't go live until um, you moderate it and you look at it. You can do that here under membership plans. And so here's general user free account. Uh, so what you can do, general settings tab. So oh, here it is, the first one. After sign up, set account status as. So if you want to moderate them, set them to on hold. And then the welcome email that they get, like this welcome basic, you can edit this template and remove the link they usually click on to verify their email address for their free account. So again, that's another way to suppress free signups, free kind of unwanted signups to your site. There really is no silver bullet, um, just kind of staying on top of it and finding ways to deter them and things like that is, is usually the best bet. But hopefully it's not too rampant that uh, it's ruining your day every day. Any other questions um, we got out there, David, typed in? We do have a few, but um, they're a little bit more complex, so I think we could probably leave them until the end of the webinar, get to them then. All right. So we've got a great tip of the week this week. I think everyone can take a little bit uh, from this. Uh, David has taken the time to kind of put together uh, five homepage elements every website needs. And I think this is really important because a lot of us, we get so immersed in our projects that we sometimes overlook some of the basics um, that we should include or um, we might drown them out with too much noise around them. Again, going back to you know keeping a clean and simple navigation for the site. Um, so Dave, if it's okay, I'd like to pass it over to you to kind of walk us through some of these uh, five homepage elements and some of the benefits and goals that each of these elements um, add to the user experience. Yeah, so before we get into this, in previous webinars, we've covered um, a lot of the design settings, different elements of the homepage, but we never really um, brought it all full circle. So hopefully this presentation will kind of um, pull everything together, give you a good idea of what elements you should have on your homepage, um, since that's probably the primary source of where new traffic is going to. And so the first element that um, everybody should have on their homepage, there's different ways to utilize it, is the hero section. So you could have a search module here, you could have some buttons as calls to actions, you could have just text without any buttons or any search modules. There's a lot of different ways you can utilize this section, but it's really an attention grabber, and so you should use it in a way that will allow your website to instantly connect with the people who are coming to your site for the very first time. Um, you can, like I said, you can utilize it as a call to action. If you know that the majority of your new visitors are looking to maybe perform a specific search, you might just want to have your search module there. Otherwise, if you want to provide them with a little bit more information about what your website offers, you can, um, you can have just text there explaining your mission, uh, maybe how long you've been around, you know, if, if you're the industry leader, um, something like that, just giving them some initial information about your website and what it offers. And before we go any further, uh, I think a great tip and, and element to keep in mind as we go through these, these elements is to always keep in mind as you're visiting your own website, keep in mind the target audience that you're focusing on, what it is they're looking to get out of your website, and what mindset they may be in if they're coming to your website for the very first time. Is the messaging clear? Does it make sense? Uh, is there a clear direction? Or are you directing the users to take clear action on your site? Otherwise, if they get to your site, they're not ex exactly clear what it is your site offers or does for them or what the benefits are and what next actions to take, they might end up going back to Google or, or going to a competitor site. So um, always keeping in mind and trying to put yourself in the shoes of your first time visitors uh, is really important. And uh, I think will provide you a good insight into specifically what elements and what messaging you should use on your homepage. Yeah, and with that, I just wanted to, to um, also mention, you know, a lot of people share their site in the Facebook group and uh, they say, can I get some feedback? What do you think of my homepage? And 
this is this is what like a, a standard site starts with. It's meant to be kind of stock and default, so you can you know add your personal touch to it. A lot of people leave their mess the default message, which is search our online member directory. Of course, this is meant to be changed and edited to match your website's goals. So yeah, back to to David's point here. Uh, you just want to make sure that you have something that's compelling um, that makes them want to. Um, go further and deeper into the website pages. And the second element you should have on your home page is to list your website's benefits, what it is you're offering to the users of your website. I think it's safe to say most website owners here in the webinar, their primary goal of their website is probably to get users registered and to become members on their site. And so you wanna be upfront about why your website will be beneficial to these new visitors. Why should they create uh, an account and register on your website, whether it's a free account or a paid one. Be upfront with them about what it is you're offering and why you can solve whatever problems it is they're coming to your site to look for solutions to. And we've, we've spoken in previous webinars, You know, let's say you're a local business directory. Well, you have two audiences, you have the local businesses that you want to join your site, and then you have the consumers or the end users who are going to search your site for those businesses in this example. You know, your homepage should cater to the end user, to the consumer. So this area on your homepage, highlighting your features or mentioning the benefits, it should appeal to the users. And let's stick with the local business uh, directory example. You know, find trusted businesses, find businesses faster. Um, get quotes from multiple businesses. These are benefits for the end user and the consumer. And then on a separate page, kind of like the Yelp thing, you know, if you go to Yelp.com, most people use the app, but everything's geared towards the consumer. And the bottom of the footer, it says, you know, list your business. A business will see that your site is is uh, catering to consumers and they're naturally, their normal intuition is going to tell them, okay, how can I get added into this uh, directory? However, if your site is not a local business directory, if you're really a membership community, maybe you have private content or premium content and you're just selling access to your premium content, then of course you can directly, you really have one audience there, it's the people that you want to access your site for that premium content. You can of course explain the benefits of becoming a member uh, of your community um, right there. So just keep in mind who the audience is that you're gonna be talking to on your home page, maybe you have multiple audiences, so you want to prioritize who's going to get the attention on your home page, and just keep those things things in mind. But definitely want to highlight some features on your home page because it let, gives them a sneak peek inside what they can get excited about and what they can expect uh, from your community. And element number three: testimonials from your members. This can play off of the section on your homepage where you list your website's benefits. But we've talked about social proof a number of times in previous webinars. We've typically mentioned it in context of landing pages, but having one or two testimonials on your homepage is a fantastic idea as well, uh, because just as many, if not more, website visitors are probably coming to your homepage as they are any landing pages that you have set up and directing traffic to. So the thing to keep in mind with the testimonials is you don't want to just have a block of text. Most of the time, website visitors, I think if you think about your behavior online, we typically just scroll past or skim over blocks of text. It's images and titles that really capture our attention. So you can see here in the sample testimonial that we have, we have a really nice image, a smiling guy, he's happy, and, uh, and we've highlighted the title. We've made the title stand out that way. Hopefully that'll catch visitors' attention, and if they want to read more about what this man has to say, then they can read the short testimonial um, just below the title. But social proof, it's a phenomenal way of demonstrating that other people in the community uh, trust and believe in your website and uh, that they're enjoying and, and are benefiting from what it is you're offering. So social proof really goes a long way. On the home page, it's great to have a simple testimonial like this. On maybe some of your inside pages or your landing pages, you might want to um, include video testimonials as well if you can get some of those from your members. Those really bring everything up a notch. And just, you know, testimonials can be a touchy subject because uh, you know, you're asking someone to, you know, maybe they want to remain private. Uh, they're just kind of using your service or community on their own. They don't want to be, you know, publicized or whatever it is. 
if you can find the right timing to ask for a testimonial, so if you can identify like a key performance indicator when you know uh, a member is happy, maybe they're, they've purchased three leads from your site, you know, that the platform does uh, support purchasing leads and referrals, um, you, we can assume that that person is enjoying their experience on the site. If you see someone who has a really decorated profile, they've gone all out and they've added events or whatever content you're allowing them to post, that's probably someone who really likes your site. Um, and there's there's no shame or no harm in incentivizing them. If you can share a testimonial, we'd love to add you know six months free to, to your membership or three months or whatever, something to incentivize them uh, for taking the time to share their honest opinion and experience. Um, and again, it, it's also a boost to yourself and a way for you to engage um, with your members and get, the, get to know them on a more personal level uh, rather than just everyone is you know, anonymously working on the site and things like that. It's really good to get personal and it really doesn't get any more personal than uh, a testimonial um, or some type of social proof of someone's uh, uh, experience of how they're enjoying your site. So I know it's hard to ask for testimonials sometimes. Again, the, you got to find the right timing. So maybe look for some key performance indicators when you know there's a high probability the person is enjoying your website or your service, and that might be a good time to kind of politely and humbly ask for a testimonial, whether it's by email or in a Facebook post or, or something like that. Those are some really great tips. Another one is to try to use negative or less than stellar interactions. Uh, try to turn those around and turn them into, into beneficial interactions. So um, if a user is coming to you with a problem that they're having on your website or they're not happy with a service that you're offering or um, they just have a general question, try to provide them with the absolute best customer service you possibly can. And if they're blown away by it, and they reply back to you, and they say, "Wow, I'm, uh, you know, I'm, I'm blown away. I didn't expect this kind of response. Uh, thank you so much." You can then follow up one last time with them to say, "You know, it's my pleasure. You know, this is this is what we're all about here. If you wouldn't mind, we'd be thrilled to uh, to have a testimonial from you on our website or something like that, so that you can not only use great interactions to your benefit and members who are succeeding." on your site and getting use out of it, but you can also turn those negative interactions around, maybe save potential refunds, and then also get uh, a good testimonial out of it. So there's a lot of ways you can go about it, but um, I think Jason's overall tip about looking uh, for, the, for the right times to ask for testimonials is really important. I'm just gonna touch on that one more time because what you said is so important and something that I, I truly believe in personally. You know, all problems are opportunities, and if someone's having a tough time with your site, or they had a bad experience, or who knows, they were they were billed twice, or they weren't billed the right amount, or they, something's not working for them, it's it's like game on. All right, how can this this person? It's probably one percent of your users had a bad experience or uh, is unhappy. And generally, if they write you a message, they're actually not as angry as as the message they write sometimes. But it's a great opportunity to dive in there give them some attention, give them some TLC, and demonstrate that you do care about them and you could and really wow them in a way that they weren't even expecting in the first place. So going that extra extra step and extra mile to try to deliver happiness uh, to users who might have had a, something go wrong, who knows what it could be, or, or some frustration with your site or service, um, that they're giving you an opportunity to, to really step up to the occasion and, and turn the situation up, up on its head. And that is a great time to ask for a testimonial after everything, you've created that relationship, you've gone through that emotional roller coaster with them, you've resolved their issue, uh, you're kind of buddies with them now. And then again, humbly, you can ask them if they mind sharing their experience or writing a review online or, or something like that. So don't be, don't be afraid when, uh, you know, those types of um, problems occur. There's always, when you're doing a business or something, something's going to come up. So just handle it as gracefully as possible and see how you can use that as an opportunity to deliver happiness to that person. All right. Number four. So one of the primary goals, maybe not the primary goal, but a primary goal of virtually any website should be to try to collect as many email addresses from your visitors as possible. The primary use for this would be to kind of allow them to get a foot in the door and then 
at a later time, you can follow up with them, you know, through newsletters or promotional emails and try to um, try to close them that way and uh, and get them registered on your site. So having a lead magnet or a free offer on your homepage is one way to do this. It could be something as simple as asking them to sign up for your newsletter. It could be offering them a free PDF download or a free business audit or anything like that to get at least just their email from them. That way you can follow up with them at a later time. And so there's a lot of people who may not be willing, especially if you're not offering free memberships, they may not be willing to immediately sign up on your site. But if you can get them to provide you with at least their email address, you can then follow up with them at a later time, even if they may have already forgotten about your site, you can stay top of mind and remind them that you know your website's there, it has beneficial offerings to them, and that they may want to revisit the site and, uh, and maybe it's time for them to sign up. So there's a lot of benefits with lead magnets and it, what you're offering to get that email address from the visitors is really dependent on who your target industry is, what your website is offering, but typically, a free PDF download, some kind of simple free service that really doesn't take a whole lot of your resources is usually the, the best and the easiest way to, to go about doing this. And we've done webinars on lead magnets before and how to you know create those landing pages. But this goes back to what we were talking about in the beginning is some people may not be ready to sign up or pull their wallet out and or you know pay for a membership or whatever it is you're offering today. They are in the awareness stage. So we should have something to sup still supplement their needs. They are browsing the internet. They're looking for something. Um, so if you could find, um, as David said, um, create some kind of a resource or link to, link to something on your site, um, but you know, in exchange for an email address um, that, that satisfy, satisfies something that they're looking for, that that's going to go a long way and and the lead magnets start doing the work for you because now you're bringing uh qualified prospective members into your top funnel so you have to you have to look at the math on this you know let, let's just let's say a thousand people visit your site a month just using simple numbers here let's say 10 percent of them are actually people who would be potential members everyone else is just kind of like a looky-loo so out of those 10 percent another 10 percent will eventually sign and pay um each month so if if we could bring more people into the the top funnel so we know a thousand people are visiting the site if we can increase the 10 percent of people who are interested uh in your solution to let's say 20 percent, those are the people who are filling out the forms uh, the lead magnet forms and giving you their email address you can increase your recurring revenue over time with the right lead magnets in the right places because you're just increasing the number of people that are coming through uh, your top funnel of your website who are prospective and potential paying members. So um, what's a good lead magnet? You know, those are things like eBooks, like 10, 10 step guide for, you know, X, Y, and Z. Really what you want to do is, is let me go back to slide one here. Your eBook should be just as compelling as your homepage title. It should be something that they want, some information that's easily digestible. Here's an email and then instant satisfaction after they receive it. Um, if you don't know how to put together like a PDF and an ebook, um, the easiest thing to do is just kind of clone your contact us form. And after they fill out that form, redirect them to like a private page on your site that has just a regular web page that has the information there that you created with the text editor. That, that would be like the simplest, simplest thing um, to do. Or even the newsletter sign up is have them fill out the newsletter form. And in the email they get, the confirmation email they get when they fill out the newsletter form, include the link to the secret page where they can then consume the content that you promised them uh, that you would deliver to them. So a lot of it is connecting emotionally with people and giving them something that's going to want them to trade their email address for that valuable piece of information. And again, this is more for people in the awareness stage um, who are just browsing and who will potentially and eventually turn into members, a small percentage of them, hopefully a large percentage of them. And last but not least, providing access to some of your free resources. Uh, again, this is one of those things we've really stressed a lot in previous webinars is providing 
uh, free resources, free content to your website visitors. It allows, again, we're, we're trying to keep in mind the first time website visitors here because members who are already registered on your website, they're probably, they probably already know what's on your homepage and they're probably looking more at some of your internal pages for some, for when they keep coming back to your site. So on your homepage, you do want to provide that access to some of your your invaluable free resources that you already have. Um, this could be articles that your members are publishing. It could be blog articles that you, as the website owner, publish. It could be videos, tutorials, news insights, really anything, any content that is of value to these first-time website visitors. Again, you have to figure out what it is, why they're coming to your website. What problem do they have? What solution are they looking for? And if you can provide them a little nugget of a solution in some of these free resources, that's the first step in, in building a relationship of trust with these website visitors that hopefully over time could evolve into, um, into a, a membership. So there's a lot of different ways. We have a lot of different streaming widgets that you can implement on your homepage for all the different kinds of content you can have on your site. But uh, I think a, a big tip for this element at least, is not to overdo it. If your website has articles, videos, photo galleries, and property listings, you probably don't want to display all of those on the homepage. If you have all of that content, it can be a little overwhelming and visitors may just end up skimming over most of it. So figure out what piece of content or what free resource you have that's most valuable to these website visitors and then put that on the home page and then from there once they get in to some of your inside pages some of those content pages they can further explore some of the additional resources that your website has to offer yeah i think you made a really good point there you know when you're going to show free resources we what we mean is you know your your site is a public site there's areas of your site that's that are probably members only and then there's areas of your site where anyone can browse and search so that very well may be the local business directory uh, that you have that could be all the events that you're listing on your site what you want to do on your home page is take your strongest and um I guess most jam-packed uh, resource that has the most content. So when people go to that section, they're like, oh, wow, this site has a wealth of, of information. Uh, what you don't want to do is, you know, link to your events and you only have one event posted in there. That's kind of like a weaker section or area of your site. So you don't really want to highlight that. You want to highlight the areas of your site that are the strongest and have your best content to showcase because you basically want to put your best foot forward um, with regard to uh, the content that you have on your site that, that is rich and that you have a lot of. Um, another thing to mention on top of this is let's say you don't have a lot of content on your site like events or articles or, or whatnot or videos. A lot of that does take time to create. Maybe you're more comfortable with you know, giving people access to a Facebook group. We did a webinar uh, a few webinars ago, actually, I think uh, four or five, where we talked about strategies on how to develop a Facebook group that then converts those Facebook group members into paying members of your site. So maybe you're more comfortable giving them free access to, um, you know, your again, your Facebook group as one example. Uh, it could be different from industry to industry. Um, you don't need so many different resources again with with most of us we are working on the site on our own or we have a very small team working with us so both time money and resources are limited uh, you want to find out what's going to appeal most to your industry maybe they want to see videos so create a strong video section on your site maybe they want articles maybe they want pdfs uh, maybe they want a facebook group but just pick one that you're comfortable with personally curating moderating and nurturing and focus on that, developing that as your strong free resource. And what the point of the free re resource is, the most important thing, is to demonstrate your authority and credibility and to show people that you are established. And that's going to build that trust factor and really pass that sniff test when people are checking you out for the first time and want to see if you're legitimate or not. So when you have that great, even that one great free resource, um, that's, that's going to help convert a lot of people who may be on the fence on if if they like what they're seeing on your site or they're not. Something that we did at Brilliant Directories, actually, and happy to share this, 
um, is our own blog. Um, if you go to brilliantdirectories.com and go to the blog section, we actually had these resources. Um, you know, all the webinars are here and things like that. These were actually scattered on different pages of our site. We had a whole separate section for webinars. We had a separate section for kind of like tips for membership and directory sites. What we decided to do, even for Brilliant Directories, is bring it all into one place. And, you know, if you come here now, now it's been a few years, um, you know, there's a wealth of, of articles here. If you came here and just looked at this blog, um, you would, you, obviously it is established, but, you know, if you're just starting out, you can give the impression, which is the goal, especially if you're starting out, you want to give the impression that you're established, you're credible, you have things together, um, and that people should trust you and, and what you're doing and what your mission is. So try to think of what that one free resource is or multiple free resources that you can really excel at. And when people come there and check it out, they're like, wow, this is really a great organization. How can I get involved more? How can I join it? So I know that's a mouthful, but those are some things to consider when we talk about offering a free resource, it's really how can I showcase my best content or put my best foot forward with, with content that I want to engage people with. And with that said, we, we've been showing you this sample site here. I think, Dave, we were gonna kind of scroll down this page and just kind of show people how they can recreate, not necessarily this specific homepage, but how we, we added these elements here to the homepage, right? Yeah, it's pretty simple. We utilized some of the, um, some of the default homepage section options and then we kind of mixed in some custom homepage content and we utilized the new the new table option in the text editor that we explained a few webinars ago. I'm just going to quickly go through the, the sections David just to show people where we edited things. So first the hero section we're all very familiar with this if you go to design settings and then you have your homepage layout and your homepage search settings uh, this, of course, is here. We've, we've uh, selected our image, some of the orientation options, um, and that two-button code thing here, I think we're going to be converting this to just options rather than code, but to get the code example here, there is button example code, and this is what's represented here as the two buttons, and of course, you want to direct people to the different areas of your site that you want to channel them and funnel them down into. Um, so that was there. And then David, you scroll down here where I'm seeing a bunch of images and text. Uh, what did you incorporate here on the page? How did you incorporate this here? Yeah, so um, as you showed at the beginning of the webinar, that hero divider, eventually you'll be able to have um, images there instead of just icons. So when that's done, you could utilize that option, that feature for this top row. For right now, we just did that in or as part of the custom homepage content utilizing the uh, the table tool so what we did is the homepage section order everyone the first section um, David had selected custom homepage content so if you're not going to stream like events and things like that you can actually put your own custom homepage content let me click here so we can edit that homepage content this is something we've covered in the previous webinar is you can now create tables of uh, to organize text and images, get them on nice, evenly, even rows. Um, so this is what we're seeing on the home page, and you can put whatever you want here. It really gives you the freedom when you do this. When you do this, I've, I've seen people, they're not even using the other streaming content. They're just creating a killer home page now with just with these tables. Uh, so we can see here we just created a table, and here's the table option here, guys. You can have one, two, three, or four columns and rows, etc. Um, and what's, what's really nice is you can drag them to make the images larger or smaller uh, for your liking. But if we scroll down here, you can, you can really easily create these things. Um, here it talks about what we're about. Here's, here's a school. This is a table with two columns. And inside one of the cells, there's another table with two columns to help organize content here. And then there's a bullet list here. Um, so again, you could put kind of like a table in a table with two columns to help organize your content. And then, of course, the member testimonial is just the image on the left. It's again another two-column table. And then the text on the right. And, of course, we're just giving the text a different color here um, and uh, just some styling to make it stand out a bit. 
So you selected custom homepage content, David, and that's what we're seeing here. Let me scroll down a bit. Stop. Yeah, and that recent table update really made all of this possible without the need to know any HTML or CSS. Right, you're just kind of most, more like Microsoft Word or something like that, exactly. which is nice. Exactly. So then after this testimonial, which is the last thing on this page, let's go back to the design settings. You have section two, you're showing the about and the join offer uh, module right. that and, we have. And this module, it has those two boxes, so it's an easy way to add some calls to action to your homepage. As you can see, we have the big button on the left, then we have the smaller link on the right. And another recent update was the ability to choose different background colors for all of these homepage sections. So just to break up the monotony of having the entire homepage be white, I selected a light gray just to help make that one section stand out a little bit and help break up the homepage. Um, and so you'll see right here, selecting the light blue, that'll change on the front end as well. Oh, yeah, nice. I have some good news for you guys also. I should have added in the BD Lab updates. This, These two modules here, um, currently, let me just toggle this closed. Um, you know, you edit it down here. Right now, they're just text inputs. So styling it has been a little bit difficult for people. We're going to be updating this to be the text editor. So you can fully style these input fields here with all the same settings that you would have on a web page. So you can add images and everything else you see here. So those two modules, the about and the web, uh, the, the join offer, basically they're just two separate modules. You'll be able to have the full text editor here um, to really decorate uh, and enhance these two boxes more so than just the plain text that we're seeing here. Yeah, that'll really add a lot of functionality to those two. All right, so, and then for section three, I guess we're just using three sections, you're showing the recent member articles with the sidebar there. Um, so if we toggle these closed, then there's section order options. Uh, so these are some sections, check out the latest articles for members. We're showing three results, and that's what we have down here uh, with a sidebar displaying as well. And you can obviously select uh, which sidebar you want to use. So you could choose not to use a sidebar, um, but having that sidebar provides a little bit more information. You could create a new sidebar as well, add some uh, some different widgets in there if you wanted to display some some information specifically for the home page that's not being utilized in a sidebar elsewhere on your site. So there's a lot of options with that. But like Jason mentioned, if you really don't need to use um, any of those streaming homepage widgets. You can just use the custom homepage content. Um, you can utilize those tables now, so it's really easy to format the page and stylize it. Um, it's just as easy as using Microsoft Word now. And uh, again, it largely depends on who your target audience is, why they're coming to your website, what solutions you're offering them. But um, in many cases, I think offering a combination of those streaming homepage widgets uh, along with custom homepage content can really strike a good balance. And um, yeah, I agree. And I think less is more on the homepage, to be honest. Um, keeping it simple, having good messaging can go a long way. I'm checking now this replace image thing is, is working here. So uh, you just click on the two arrows and... Uh, uh, you can replace your image, uh, whether selecting an image or however you want. So um, that's working there as well. All right. Hope you guys like that tip of the week. Uh, let's take some questions from you guys. I'm sure uh, there are some out there. Uh, Darshan, how are you today? I'm doing good. How are you? Good, good. Um, how would you like the presentation so far today? Oh, fantastic. Thank you for putting this together. Awesome. A lot of awesome. great content. Great, great. And uh, what's your question for us? So I am a relatively new member. I'm enjoying the experience so far. Um, so as so as everyone, I'm trying to get um, more members registered. So I'm starting off with a list of about 300 members that I've essentially scraped and you know are part of my the industry that I'm catering towards. Now my question is, how is it? What is the best way to go and solicit them? Is it through claim listings? Is it to add them as free listings? And you know what are the advantages and disadvantages of those two? So that's a really good question. A lot of people, um, you know, they acquire email lists, whether, the, the, you know, they purchase, you know, you could, you could buy data basically online. It's all fine. But how you contact them, 
really sets the tone of, of how people are going to perceive your site moving forward. Delicately is 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 how you should approach it. Um, if you wanted to call them first, um, I'd have some talking points uh, figured out first. Uh, why you're reaching out to them, um, what your site has to offer them, why you've chosen them, um, you know, to to as as a person to contact. Um, explaining those things to them and then what they can get from your site. Um, those are some talking points that you should already have in place. Now, the reason I recommend maybe calling one or two of them is so, and again, calling sounds really weird, but getting hands on and just, even if they get mad at you, getting their feedback and, and reaction is going to help you in how you maybe send an email blast to the next group of members. Um, and then that's another tip is if you're going to send an email, don't send it to the whole bunch at one time. Send it to a smaller sample. See what the feedback is. Maybe you don't get a favorable feedback. Maybe you do get a favorable feedback. But that way you can adjust your messaging um, to them. And then lastly, play to their ego. You know, let them know that you're, they're a noteworthy person in the industry and you think that they'd be a perfect match for the service you're offering. Uh, they have a lot to benefit. Um, you know, kind of, kind of just build them up a bit that they're the perfect person uh, based on their experience and, and whatnot in their industry uh, to be a part of your of your site. But the most important thing is what value or ongoing value are they going to be provided with for being a part of your site? And if that's a true and genuine value that you're able to deliver for them, um, you know, then give them a small taste. Um, no risk, you know, kind of like a, a free trial where you don't have to put a credit card. There's no risk. There's no obligation. That's another a good way to approach it if you're if you're going to be proactive in, in approaching them to join your site. So there's no silver bullet when you're doing like claim listings or you're trying to contact a, a cold email list. Uh, you're basically prospecting. It's cold calling or cold emailing. Uh, so you just have to come at them with the right angle, and, and that right angle is different for every industry. So would you even consider adding them as a free member or claim claim listing before reaching out to them, or do you think people would be kind of bothered by that? Um, again, it depends on the industry, how sensitive people are. Generally, people won't if you tell them, like, hey, we found you as, as you know a noteworthy professional in the industry, and we've added you to our site. We invite you to add more content. If you join, you can get the referrals that your profile brings and things like that. Um, the way you frame their their profile, you can you can say we've showcased you on our on our site. Um, you know, hi, highlight them in a special way, make it seem more than just like a business listing. Make it seem like something more prestigious. And again, that plays to the ego um, of you know everyone wants to be put on a high pedestal and and, and championed. So. Um, if you could do that in a tasteful manner that, that caters to them, you'll probably get less backlash uh, from adding those people to, to your site. And just another thing, if, if you're adding, adding them to your site and it's, I guess, it's information that's part of the public domain, um, I think it's, it's perfectly fine to add that type of content to your site, that information that's already part of the public domain. But if it's additional private information or information that's not normally shared, I'm not sure, but you might want to check if you have that permission to include that on your site. So you might want to start with the basic information and then invite them to come add more information to their profiles. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. I know it's not a perfect answer. There's no silver bullet, but, uh, you know, just some things to consider, Deshaun, when you're, when you're approaching them. We do have our good friend, Ken here. How you doing, Ken? Hey, very well. How are you guys? Good, good. Thanks for joining the webinar today. My pleasure. And what's your question for us? A uh, simple one, I think. Okay. Um, I'm just wondering if there's a way to, uh, like an undo feature, if you save something that you're working on if you're working on a page and you save it and then realize you made an error for whatever other reason want to go back to a previous version is there a, a feature for that okay so good question um, i've changed the images here on the this home page example let's save the changes okay that's saved you, you notice the page didn't reload we just got this kind of alert here I should be able to revert back using this button when it comes to the text editor. Um, unless the page page actually reloads, you're you're not going to be able to use this undo functionality. Something we're looking at in the in the in the future is not just for web pages, but if you're kind of working on a menu or 
uh, a custom widget and things like that, we do want to include in the future revision history so that you can, up to a certain level, revert back your changes to a previous a version of a specific widget or a menu or some individual item that you've edited that you want to go back on. It's not quite there yet, uh, but it is something that is on our roadmap. Okay, I'm looking forward to seeing that. Okay, in a worst case- Speaking of someone who makes the occasional error. <laughs> yeah, well, in a worst case scenario, um, let's say you had a staff member and they've, uh, or something happened, like you accidentally deleted a batch of members or, or something a little more extreme. Um, all Brilliant Directory sites, we do have a one-day backup of every site. Um, if you have the 14-day uh, website backup or the VIP add-ons club, we have 14 consecutive days of backups. And in many cases, if it's just one part of your site, maybe you don't want to back up a reset of your entire site from the last 14 days or whatever. We can restore, for example, maybe just you just need your web pages restored or just your design settings restored. You don't need the whole site uh, backed up or, or sorry, restored. Um, you can email the support team for those things. And again, that's another thing we're looking at in the future is what, what Ken was originally talking about was a revision history and being able to revert revisions of specific items. We also are looking forward to, uh, in the future, being able to put the restore uh, functionality in your hands where up to a certain amount of days that the backups are available, you can manually go there and reset certain parts, restore certain parts of your site uh, based on a certain day that you know it was correct or something like that. So. Uh, those kinds of things are not only going to help our support department by giving you guys more power to kind of, as Ken said, you know, undo some, you know, oopsie daisies that you might do on your site. Uh, but I think it's going to help everyone have a little more confidence in working on their sites as well, because it's if you do make an oopsie daisy on your site, uh, you can always go back to a, a revision or previous version of that uh, element. So um, it's not exactly close, but it is in our roadmap uh, for uh, this coming year. All right, good question there, Ken. All right, we got Paul. Um, how are you doing, Paul? Yeah, hi there. Um, I'm a new member looking at creating my first uh, VD website. All right, welcome I'm to the panel. Focus, thank you. I'm looking at more of a focus on a regional um, guide rather than a um, industry guide. And um, just going back to your tips for um, about listing your website's benefits, making it quite uh, important. You refer to Yelp, so I'm wondering, obviously the the um, revenue coming in to sustain the business would be um, from people paying for a listing, but do you think it's important to list the benefits to the end user being the, the people looking for businesses, or do you want those benefits to be, you know, why a business should be uh, creating a profile? Because you mentioned the Yelp example was sort of almost burying the um, the become a member, the business member at the bottom. Good question. I would I would in in that case the the homepage should be consumer facing the end user. The benefits should be for the end user. Why should they delve deeper into the site to search? Um, and then the afterthought of that is okay. How to you know after that's been established. You don't want to totally hide it, um, but you do want to give the business an opportunity to participate on your site if they're part of that that local region. Um, I, I don't normally um, unmute two people at a time, but we do have Colette. Colette, I'm wondering if I can unmute your microphone because I know your website is specific to a region, and I'm wondering if maybe uh, you could provide some of your own insight from your experience on how you – how do you get businesses to join your site? What do you showcase on your on your homepage? Is it okay to unmute you, Colette? Yes, sure, Jason. Happy to help out. Um, so I did try a bit with uh, claim listings and all of that. But as you said, Jason, the best option is um, phoning, uh, making that personal connection, offering more than they expect. All of those have done wonders for my website and especially during this lockdown session i've been offering uh, free listings for people who are offering vouchers to use after lockdown is finished um so it's it's really just about connecting with the community so no matter whether it's a small town or a region 
try to be as personal as possible. Very good. So we're on your homepage here. And again, if I'm a consumer, I'm loving everything I'm seeing here because it's all geared towards providing me with some valuable information. And then up here at the top, uh, we can see you have add your business. So it's not totally hidden. It's just not yes. all over the homepage. Uh, the homepage content, as you scroll down, is geared towards the consumer. Um, thank you, Colette. Thanks for that. And also... Um, I've chatted with Colette recently on Facebook, so thanks for your support, uh, Colette, in New Zealand. So, uh, oh, okay. um, and thanks for answering the question. It's pretty much reinforcing what you said about Yelp, having all the value for the consumers, the end user um, front and center, and have the uh, the link for the business sort of off to the side. Okay, good stuff there. And again, it's different for every uh, industry. In this case, it's it's you know it's a local business directory in a way. There's more to it, but that's basically what it is. So we do want to give the consumer what they're hungry for first, and then the businesses will fall in line knowing that our site is attracting the consumers based on the content we're showcasing on the site. So thank you for that question, Paul. Let's right, see if we could take another question or two here. All right, let's come back to uh, to Rich here. How you doing, Rich? Uh, great, Jason. Hey, right. quick question on the um, what you described earlier about you know creating a profile for someone, asking them to update. Is that similar, or you know, to the claim you're listing? I mean, how does that differ? So the official way the claim listing works is um, I don't I can't think of an example off the top of my head to show, but um, if they happen to stumble upon their business on your site. Um, they can then, it says there's a banner that says claim this listing or profile. Um, and if they click on that, um, you can choose where the link goes to. Maybe you want it to go directly to the sign up page. Um, some, we, we try to recommend not leading them to a free sign up because then competitors can hijack the claim listing if it's free. So again, it might not be the case. It might not be abused on your site, um, but just a consideration. But you can direct them to where they can just self-automated, they can claim the listing, click the button, go to the sign-up page, and after they complete the sign-up form for whatever membership plan you direct them to, they'll then have ownership of that profile. The claim listing banner will no longer show on the listing, um, and they'll be able to add and control the content on that profile there as if they signed up as a regular member. Now, what you can do if you want is... If you don't want to use claim listing, you can certainly add profiles to your site um, and then just email them saying, hey, we've added you to our site. Do you want the login access or do you want us to upgrade? You know, do you want to be a, an official member on our site? Uh, and at that point, you can maybe manually provide them with their login information or something like that. They don't have to go through the claim listing process. So those are two different ways you can give people access to their profiles, whether it's manual or the self-automated method of with the claim listing add-on where they do it all themselves. Yeah, I like that idea, the second and um, the latter. I mean, I think what the earlier person was asking, is there you know, any uh, best practices as far as like if we put a, um, you know, a sponsor or a company on there, you know, with their logo or some of their content to create some interest and excitement, but is there any pushback of like, hey, we didn't authorize this or that kind of thing? Is there any best practices it's, or like you said, so long as it's – Yeah, it's possible you could get pushback. Um, I mean, in the worst case, you just take it you take it down at their request. Um, it shouldn't be any problem with that. But if you are concerned, you just might want to approach with an extra step of caution uh, in those in those cases. But yeah, getting people to, if you're going to add listing, we always recommend people say, common question is, how do I get my members to join my site? I don't have members. Well, we, we say, why don't you just add your first 100 members yourself? Um, you know, if you don't have people ready to join, just add them and then see if they want to stick around. Contact them, call them, let them know you've added them. Uh, you love what they do in the industry. Again, play to their ego. You, you want them to participate. Um, Give them your first hundred people like the free pro membership or premium membership that you're going to offer to future people so they feel extra special that they got in, you know, um, early bird or whatever it is. But if you just if you're just getting the ball started, don't wait for your members to do something. Just be proactive and do, and do it yourself and figure it out along the way. Um, at least you're being productive in that sense. Yeah, I like that idea. It's kind of like um, putting cars in the parking lot when you open a business, you know, so create some uh, interest and people I don't think like 
you know, joining or going into a restaurant if there's no cars in the parking lot. Exactly. So some people get stuck on the chicken or the egg. Like, why are visitors right. going to search if I don't have members? Why are members going to join if I don't if I don't have uh, visitors? Uh, uh, there's a flip side to that also is, you know, very common practices. We always say you're building a marketplace like Uber has drivers and they have riders. So you're building a marketplace. If you, First, you need to get one side of the marketplace. So maybe you have a secondary product or service or as we talked about, a lead magnet like an ebook and you build the list of one half of your marketplace. And then once you have that one half of the marketplace, then you can start advertising to the second half of the marketplace saying, okay, now we can really make the intended connection that this project was built for. But in the first place, you can create a secondary lead magnet or something to capture half of the marketplace. Um, and then you, you once you have that half of the marketplace, that's automatically the, the uh, incentive for the other half to participate because now you're making that connection. Well, I love that approach. I mean, um, you're definitely uh, written the book on this and appreciate your time. And uh, thanks again for answering the question. Sure, sure. My pleasure. Thanks for joining the webinar. All right, guys. Um, what a great webinar. Thank you so much for joining us. Just to recap uh, the tip of the week, some elements to include uh, on your homepage, um, access or showcasing your best free resources, um, adding a lead magnet that will incentivize users to uh, trade their email address for like an ebook or access to some portion of your site. Uh, testimonials, don't be afraid to ask for testimonials, especially look for the right timing and key performance indicators that will tell you that uh, which members are good candidates uh, to ask for testimonials at certain times uh, during their journey on your site. Uh, definitely list your website benefits and what the end user uh, can expect and experience on your site. In addition to that, use high quality imagery. Uh, there's tons of stock photo websites out there, even free stock photo websites. There's no reason not to have good high quality images. And again, a caveat to that, high quality doesn't mean uh, large proportions. You wanna keep the image sizes the memory size of the images relatively as, uh, as small as possible, but you do want good quality images on your homepage. And also compelling and emotional title messaging on your site that will immediately and instantly connect uh, with the person who's visiting for your site and make them say, why didn't I find this site sooner? That's what the messaging on your site uh, should do to qualified and potential members. Uh, so thank you, David, for putting that together. Uh, if we didn't get to your question today, no need to fear. Join us in our Facebook group. We can go. You can go to brilliantdirectories.com forward slash Facebook. We can definitely con continue the conversations over there. Um, the next webinar will be in two weeks. We do them every two weeks. So generally we hit uh, two webinars a month on average. And on behalf of myself and David and the entire Brilliant Directories family, thank you guys so much for joining us today. Hope you guys got a lot out of today's webinar. We look forward to seeing you in the next one. So have a great day and a brilliant week. Take care, guys. Thank you.